Hello, welcome to the NMR Center of the National Institute of Chemistry in Ljubljana. My name is Gregor Mali. I'm a research professor at the Department of Inorganic Chemistry and Technology at this institute. I use solid-state NMR spectroscopy for studying various materials, and I've been doing this for more than two decades already. So let's visit our lab. Okay, this is the lab where my colleagues and I do the majority of the experimental work. This is where we do solid-state NMR. Solid-state nuclear magnetic resonance is one of the most powerful spectroscopic techniques because it can provide element-specific atomic resolution insight into solids. It exploits atomic nuclei with magnetic dipole and electric quadrupole moments as tiny probes for the detection of the local magnetic and electric fields. Through the detection of these fields, solid-state NMR offers insight into the local structure, processes and dynamics in solids. When a sample containing a large ensemble of atomic nuclei is placed into a magnetic field, the energy of some nuclei rises and of some nuclei it falls. The energy difference between the two energy levels depends on the strength of the magnetic field, which is a sum of an external magnetic field, generated by the strong magnet of the NMR spectrometer, and of the local magnetic fields produced by nearby electrons and atomic nuclei in the solid. The aim of NMR spectroscopy is to very precisely measure differences in these local magnetic fields. It does this by precisely measuring the transition frequencies between the energy levels. Such a measurement gives us an NMR spectrum. In the spectrum, atomic nuclei that fill different local fields give rise to signals at different frequencies and with different shapes. For doing NMR spectroscopy, we need an NMR spectrometer, which consists of a strong superconducting magnet, an NMR probe and a console. We have a relatively old magnet in a separate small room. This magnet generates homogeneous static magnetic field of 14.1 Tesla. Into the magnet we insert the NMR probe. This is the heart of the spectrometer which holds the investigated sample. Within the probe the sample is surrounded by a small coil with which we excite and manipulate nuclear magnetic moments and detect their response in a form of induced oscillated voltage. With the computer, we transform the so-called time domain signals to the frequency domain, that is, to a spectrum. My colleague, Dr. Andras Kranz, will show you what kind of samples we investigate in our lab and how we prepare these samples for the NMR measurements. Most of our research is focused on microporous materials, more precisely on zeolites and metal organic framework materials. These materials are very important in catalysis, in gas separation and storage, in energy storage and in some other fields. We also study battery-related materials, pharmaceuticals, polymers and more. Basically, we can study any material that contains NMR-sensitive nuclei in sufficiently high concentration. Another important requirement is that the material comes in a form of powder. This is because NMR signals are typically quite weak and measurements on a single particle, single crystallite, are rarely feasible. Powdered samples give rise to broad NMR signals called powder patterns, because of which resolution in the NMR spectra of powders is poor and various signals can only hardly be distinguished one from another. To improve the resolution of NMR spectra of powders, we almost always rotate such samples. You can see that sample rotation or spinning drastically increases the resolution and the signal-to-noise ratio within the spectra. We only spin very fine powders. If the obtained samples are not such, if they contain large particles, we grind them. We put fine powders into tiny ceramic tubes, which we call rotors. We try to fill as much sample as possible and as homogeneously as possible into the rotor. Namely, the intensity of the NMR signal is proportional to the number of the detected NMR active nuclei so the more sample we observe, the stronger the signal we detect. As you can see, a rotor is closed by a plastic turbine and a plastic cap. Fine powders can be spun with very high frequencies. The maximal spinning frequencies depend on the diameter of the rotor. In this lab, we have rotors of three sizes, with outer diameters of 6 mm, 3.2 mm and 1.6 mm. Each type of rotor fits only into an adequate NMR probe, which means that we also have three different probes. 
the selection of the rotor and probe type depends on the quantity of the sample that we have, the sensitivity of the nuclei that we want to study, and the required spinning frequency. The available volumes of the 6 mm, 3.2 mm, and 1.6 mm rotors are 155 microliters, 22 microliters, and 8 microliters, respectively. For efficient filling of these rotors, we thus typically ask for at least 300 mg, 50 mg and 20 mg of sample for the three different types of rotors. The largest rotors can be spun with frequencies of up to 9 kHz, the middle ones go up to 25 kHz and the maximum spinning frequency for the 1.6 mm rotors is 40 kHz. Fast spinning is especially important in paramagnetic samples or when we are interested in proton NMR spectra of proton-rich samples with very rigid structures. Speaking of paramagnetic samples, I should note that these are typically very difficult to study by NMR, so are also the conductive samples, for those samples especially, but also for the others, it is highly recommended that the interested customers or visiting researchers thoroughly discuss the materials with our NMR team.